In this video, we are going to solve a few numerical questions on enthalpy and calorimetric measurements. Okay, so let's look at the first question. It says, what mass of methane should be combusted to heat 1 kg of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius? Assume that all the heat released in this reaction is absorbed by water. And what's the reaction? Combustion of methane which is CH4 plus 2O2 forms CO2 plus 2H2O. We also have some extra information here which is the standard enthalpy change for this reaction is minus 890 kilojoules per mole and the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Alright, so how do we solve this question? Well, firstly we need to calculate what amount of heat is actually required to raise the temperature of water, 1 kg of water from 25 degree Celsius to 100 degree Celsius. And for this, we can use a specific heat capacity formula which is Q is equal to mc delta T. I have referred to it as Q water because we are talking about the heat absorbed or heat required by water to raise the temperature. Get it? Now we already have information about mass, specific heat capacity and the change in temperature. So we simply substitute these values into this equation. And when we do that, we get the final answer as 313.5 kilojoules. So this is the amount of heat energy that needs to be supplied or that has to be absorbed by water to raise its temperature. And that means the heat released by the reaction should be negative of the heat absorbed by water because we are assuming that all the heat released in this reaction is absorbed completely by water, right? And as a result, we can write the heat released by the reaction Q reaction is equal to minus QW, which is nothing but minus 313.5 kilojoules. So now that we figured out the amount of heat that must be supplied, our next step is to calculate what mass of methane should be burned or combusted to produce this amount of heat energy, right? And how do we do that? For that you can look at the delta H0 value here. The standard enthalpy change for the given reaction is given as minus 890 kilojoules per mole. So that means one mole of methane on combustion releases 890 kilojoules of heat energy. So how many moles of methane would be required to produce 313 kilojoules of heat energy? It's a simple straightforward calculation. So the number of moles of methane required would be the heat required or the heat that needs to be supplied divided by the heat released per mole of methane which is nothing but minus 313.5 kilojoules divided by minus 890 kilojoule per mole and that gives us the number of moles of methane that needs to be combusted as 0.352 moles. But that's not a question. We are not asking for the number of moles of methane that needs to be burned. We are asking for the mass of methane that should be combusted. And that's again a straightforward calculation where we simply need to multiply it by the molar mass of methane. And on doing that, we get the final answer as 5.63 grams, approximately 5.63 grams. So that means approximately 5.63 grams of methane should be combusted to heat 1 kg of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. Alright, so let's look at one more question. It says a silver coin of 25 grams is heated to 45 degrees Celsius. Let's call it T1. It is then dropped into a vessel holding 25 grams of water which is maintained at 22 degrees Celsius. Let's call this temperature T2. We need to figure out what is the final temperature of the system. That is once the thermal equilibrium is attained, what is the final temperature? So we have some information on the specific heat capacity of water and the specific heat capacity of silver. So how do we figure out what is the final temperature of the system? Alright, let's give it a try. So firstly we can see that T1 is greater than T2. That is the temperature of the silver coin is much greater than the temperature of water. And we can also see that both the masses are same. The mass of silver coin and mass of water are same. Alright. So when two different substances of different temperatures are mixed together, there obviously will be a transfer of heat energy, right, from the hotter substance to a colder substance until a thermal equilibrium is attained. The temperature change in each of these substances would depend entirely on the specific heat capacity of the individual substances. Now when you look at the specific heat capacity, you can see that the capacity of water is much greater than that of silver. It is 4.18 joule per gram degree Celsius, whereas the specific heat capacity of silver is only 0.24 joules per gram degree Celsius. 
you can see that water has a much much greater specific heat capacity as compared to silver so what does this actually mean you see specific heat capacity is basically the amount of heat required to change the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree celsius now since water has a much greater specific heat capacity it means that the temperature change in water will be much smaller as compared to the temperature change in silver that is water can hold a lot more heat as compared to silver and as a result it will not give as dramatic a temperature difference or temperature change as would be observed in substances that have lower heat capacity and as a result what happens is that when thermal equilibrium is attained between these two substances silver and water the final temperature would be closer to that of water to the initial temperature of water which is t2 than to the initial temperature of silver which is t1 all right so to find the final temperature of the system we will look at the amount of heat that is lost by silver which will be exactly equal to the amount of heat that is gained by water and this equality of heat gained and heat lost when a thermal equilibrium is attained is a direct result of the law of conservation of energy which states that energy cannot be created or destroyed but only transferred and as a result of this the total energy of the system that contains both of these substances silver coin and water must remain constant assuming that we are not losing any heat to the external surroundings and this is why the heat lost by one substance which in our case is silver coin would be equal in magnitude but opposite in sign to the heat gained by the other substance which is water so let's use a specific heat capacity formula and substitute the values of m c and delta t for each of these substances for water and silver now mass is constant in both of these cases so we can cancel them out now t f refers to the final temperature of the system after thermal equilibrium is attained and when we do this calculation we get the final answer t f as approximately equal to 23.2 degrees celsius now what did i say before i said that the final temperature would be closer to t2 or the temperature of water as compared to temperature of silver correct and do you see that happening here the final temperature tf is 23.2 degrees celsius is closer to the initial temperature of water which is 22 degrees celsius as compared to the initial temperature of silver which is 45 degrees celsius and this is simply because of that huge difference in the specific heat capacity of these two substances